This is about two weeks or a week and a half after the last episode. So it's it's our episode three, but it's really we've we've done place training multiple times, and we're starting to add some distraction. And this is a pretty extreme example of it. It's probably two weeks later. Easy, hey, slow down. And it didn't start out as a session. It started out as me coming downstairs and hearing all this commotion and looking and seeing Steph and Lillian working with Makina. Now this is another session that happens a day or two later. So that wasn't a training session. That was an everyday life example. This is not a training session either. This is me and Lillian while mom's away and we're watching a movie. I think we're watching Robin Hood at this point. And so Lillian was into the movie, but what, what the point of this episode is going to show, incrementally we've increased the distractions. Now this is a significant amount, so a, an earlier distraction would be maybe me standing up and walking past the bed. The very first two episodes I sat at the chair and was quiet and just observed. As she got better and my confidence grew that she wasn't going to come off, I would get up and walk past her. Well, that would stir her up. So she'd have to get past that. And so it took a constant watching of her for several, for probably a couple weeks, um, at least a week, where when I put her on place, I was focused on her. Within a few days, I probably could start paying attention to my computer a little bit because I would hear her move if she was going to get off. I slowly let her build my trust in the fact that she's not coming off and understanding what that perimeter was. This is a couple weeks later and the distractions are much bigger. We're in a different area, we've moved, that's another thing you need to do is this can't be done in the exact same spot because I think they get really good at it there. Now we move them, now she's in the living room, now she's got Lillian watching a movie. Now Lillian before was really distracting as she was running around and tempting her. This is more, well, Lillian's right there. She could chew on her. She's tempted to right now. She kind of wants to. Ah, ah, ah. Lillian, you don't let her chew on your foot. Here you see me and you hear me recognizing that. I could, I'm, I'm training right now. Lillian's watching a movie. Makina thinks she's living her life here at our house and I'm training. This is another, this is a good example of how do you build training into everyday stuff without spending extra time training. You, you figure out ways to be creative with it. So I allowed this to happen to a degree when it became too big of an issue, I either had to change Lillian or the dog. And so you're gonna see another boring session, but with added elements of distraction. And these distraction things vary. This is just one example of how you distract. Now look at her, reach out, reach out, reach out. I've got a confidence she's not gonna step out, step off. If she were, I'd correct her the exact same way I did in day one and day two. But she's slowly building up this understanding of, man, I just can't get off here. And you'll see she has a little fr she'll get frustrated, and then she'll sit down, and then she'll relax, and she'll get excited. And it's constant, and it's become so habitual to her of understanding there is no other option. I cannot get off of here. Again, still not allowing this dog to jump off and on at free will. If she places herself, she's on place. If she's coming off, I go over and I pick her up. And I don't have to carry her away for 20 feet. I can carry her away for a step and set her down on the ground. But I'm the one who initiates the release off the bed. She doesn't. Here she's bored. She says, come on, Lillian, let's play. Come on, Dad, I want to play with you too. She looks away from me and goes, ah, Lillian's probably more of a sucker. So Lillian moved away from her, and now she's going to have to try to find something else. If it, if it were too much for Lillian, for the dog to have Lillian that close, I'd take that bed and I'd just push it away a couple feet. If Lillian wants to sit there, I'm gonna move the dog away a little bit. Not so close that she can get Taylor in the background there, but not so close that she can get Lillian in the foreground. I think what you see here with this behavior is, she's got a lot of style. She's got a lot of natural setter style, and she just looks like a pointing dog. And she's built, I think this is going to help us build a patience and a steadiness and a, the ability to wait and not be nearly as antsy to move the feet. 
I really think it's going to help us when we eventually go to some woe training. Or and I don't. When I say woe training, I think all of a sudden we think about birds. I am thinking more and more on this, and this is you're going to see more of this in the future. Is my idea is what really is woe? Woe is simply I think just to get the dog to stop. Well, I, that's steadiness. So it's a different word and it's a different approach and it's a different style maybe for the finished product with the dog, but in the reality, it's just obedience. And so I think her using this perimeter place to realize I'm limited with my options is going to transfer and translate to training later. We'll see. You do see a little bit of that reaching in the paw. I went through about a week and a half issue with her putting one paw down. Ah, 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 ah. And there is a correction. She's all right, leave her alone. No. So she tested me on that for about a week. And it was, can I get away with one paw? And I can't allow it to happen because as soon as I did, it became consistent. She'd reach for another paw. And the problem is, is if you let her have one paw, pretty soon it's going to be two paws. And it's going to be three paws. And it's going to be, I'm leaning out, I'm off the bed. And I don't want to challenge and, and have the battle of that slippery slope. It's black and white. You're on it or you're off of it. As long, and my rules are you can't touch the ground. So that little paw hanging off, I'll accept it. If the paw touches the ground, I'm correcting it. The sniffing and the nosing, it's, it's borderline. Whatever you decide, you got to be consistent with. Not the most exciting training videos, and Ben's going to fast forward through the stuff that there's not a lot going on, but the point of this is not to bore you. The point of this is not to entertain you. The point of this is to try to have you understand this is the way it really happens. This is where you really gain with your training program. When I say program, I don't mean like specific, I mean like the process. This is where you gain is with every day, multiple times a day, doing similar things. Now watch that paw. You hear her get a little audible, a little, a little vocal. She gets frustrated, she whines, she does it occasionally. She's getting a lot better at it because I don't really feed it. It doesn't stimulate a change, which is what she's trying to do with it. Or she's just frustrated and I let her work that out. But I do think you'll notice that after a couple of weeks, she's a lot quicker to settle in. Now, if you don't do a good job with this consistently, you don't see these results. It becomes more and more frustrating. I think a lot of times if you're experiencing that, you gotta ask yourself, how consistent am I? If you're really consistent and you're making the right decisions and the dog is, doesn't have the chance to make the mistakes, it, you're, not gonna have, you're not gonna struggle with this. If you are struggling with it, you've got to figure out why. And 99% of the time, if not more, it's us. It's how we're doing it. It's how we're setting it up for the dog, not the dog itself. Trying to engage Lillian here. She's trying to get Lillian to say, come on, let's play. Lillian's doing a great job of ignoring her and zoning out to the Robin Hood. And so the little puppy decides, I'm gonna have to move on. Wonder if that thing will play with me. Wonder if I can get into this. Wonder if I can get into that. You can just see the wheels turning in that dog. And the takeaway is, man, nobody wants to screw off. Be gentle, Lillian. Sit, move over a little bit. That's training the kid as much as it is the dog. 
Nice little reward there. Slippery paw. Get up. You can see in the background, I've got that. That's actually Lillian's old bed when she was a little baby for traveling, uh, we give it to our older dogs because it's more comfortable. I don't give it to the young dog because she chew it up. So there's that's a point where they earn certain things, th certain comforts. It just won't be helpful for right now for the puppy. It would form a habit that's undesirable. Hey, leave her be. She's doing just what she needs to do. Got it? Got it? Now this isn't a child rearing video by any means, but what I just noticed is, listen to the tone of voice. Sometimes I'm pretty serious with my kids. Sometimes I'm pretty serious with my puppies and dogs. Sometimes I'm pretty lighthearted and playful and I think that it's all dictated on the situation and I firmed up a little bit with Lily in there got it that's intentional and she did and then she moved off and focused on whatever it is she was going to do and watching that show but she moved away from me and that's fine but I'm not so I'm not going to be all cuddly coddly always it's there's there's time for that and then there's also time where the dog where the dog or the kid needs to understand it's Serious means business. Good girl. And there's a nice change from her. She's decided I'm not going to reach out. I'm going to sit down and wag my tail, and I say to you, good girl. And now she goes, really? That's, that's what you want. How about this? Okay. okay. These are light bulb moments for the dog to understand that's what, that's what he wants me to do. She's happy about it. I mean, I gave her a little attention with a good. But you can't give them too much to make them boil over. This whole thing, the last minute, was a nice lead up to a settling in. You could just see it was coming. Really good response there for Lillian rolling around on the ground for her not to get excited. That's a really good sign of Makina realizing, hmm, not going anywhere, we're not doing anything different. I'll adjust and get a little bit better view, but really good behavior wise. Once again, this is a session that we're watching TV anyway, let's make it into something positive. Let's get something out of the everyday lifestyle stuff that we're doing that'll benefit the dog. And it's another way to emphasize the consistency. Keep in mind, she's been on place multiple times each day between the last episode and this episode, and that's probably 15 straight days. So this is probably day 20-something of her understanding place, slowly getting better at it. <laughs> 